everybody. Uh, a frosty Friday afternoon. It's absolutely nudges out there, uh, but it's not so bad in here. So we shall crack on with uh, another knife review. First thing though, um, on the last video, one of the comments was a suggestion that I've been off the background music because it was distracting. So for this video at least, um, there'll be no music and if anybody's got any strong opinions either way for or against the uh, twiddly prog rock in the background let me know, PM, comment, email um, majority opinion rules but for the moment um, as requested by J Hines Yahoo uh, we're going to have a, a music free video another quick message for J um, the knife we're going to look at now was on order before we exchanged PMs a few days ago. So, uh, next section of the video, desktop review, it will be in two sections. First section, uh, unboxing and initial impressions. And then we'll move into the second section where, having played with the knife for a couple of days, um, I'll offer some conclusions and see what you think. Okay, so here we have um, today's unboxing, or unpacketing, uh, delivered from Heine Haynes. Now this, um, this knife was chosen to fulfil um, a couple of specific things. Now, what have we got in here? Get rid of that. Got the Heine Haynes catalogue, which is um, always good for a leaf through when you're sat on the throne. So I'll put that to one side as well. And here is the delivery. So, as I say, for um, chosen for a couple of particular things. First one off. Um, no CRKT knives in the collection up to now so this is the first one and there we have uh, Hammond Cruiser quite a substantial box there we have the knife little product leaflet notes about fitting the pocket clip and a warning not to carry it tip up as it could result in serious injury I'm not entirely sure why people would carry it tip up but I've never tried either way myself so I don't honestly know but there we have the other uh, pocket clip obviously it's not symmetrical so there's two depending which way you want to fit them so as I say, the first thing that this night, first brief this knife fulfilled was it's a CRKT. I haven't got any so far. The other thing is that it's a flipper. Now, this is the Jim Hammond Desert Cruiser. So it's the production version of Jim Hammond's custom knife. This is £20. Um, whereas his own custom versions are I think it's about $700 for the military and about $900 for the collection collector's grade version but as I say this is the first flipper so let's have a go uh, <laughs> let's see not massively successful now I don't know initially whether this is just my complete lack of technique oh there we go or whether the knife needs a bit of adjusting so we'll have to have a look at that um, as we go along some brief specs it's a 95 millimeter blade and um, three and three quarter inches 
well that's allegedly I'm gonna, that seems it seems to be quite a bit bigger than the specs that I've written down so let's just have a check Um, no, actually, for the cutting edge, that is about right, yeah. Um, closed length is 5 and a quarter inches, uh, 133 millimetres. The weight is 178 grams, 6.3 ounces. And blade thickness is 3 mil. And the steel is 8CP14 MOV. And I've not been able to find out anything at all about this steel so far. Um, but see, I'll do a bit more homework, see what we can find out. The other thing that is um, relevant in terms of adding this to the collection is the locks, safety lock. This is the first lock, uh, sorry, the first knife that has that I've got with a secondary lock. So here we can see the fairly standard liner lock, quite an early lock up, but then. If you open it, the liner clock lock clicks into place, and there's this little lever there, which I believe introduces a wedge of some form to stop the liner lock. And in fact, you can just about see a slim piece of metal there. That stops the liner lock disengaging until you move the little stud back, and then you can close the knife. Not entirely sure if that's necessary. Um, I've never had the liner lock burst open on me so far. So initial thoughts: the fit and finish looks really good. Bear in mind, this only costs twenty quid. The blade centering is pretty much spot on. The Zytel handle scales, uh, like a, a honeycomb recess pattern seems to be quite good for uh, grip it's not uncomfortably harsh but it is quite definite the positive grip see the pocket clip there with the mounting holes at either end thumb studs on either side line the lock clicks in nice and positively it's quite heavy say 6.3 ounces and the weight is as you can see favours the handle a little bit so it does feel nice in the hand, it's a big handle I'd say five and a quarter inches closed um, you've got a good guard there and a good drop down there and this is <coughs> one of the things that made me choose this particular knife as the first flipper the reason being, the flippers that I've been looking at, most of them, the flipper is visible in front of the handle scales and it sometimes starts right at the end of the cutting edge and aesthetically you've basically got this big ugly chin that really spoils the line of the knife for me but with this one the shape of the flipper has been matched to this part of the guard so that when the knife is open the flipper doesn't actually stick out on its own it's inside the handle and I think that that makes a big difference to the appearance of the knife um, I'm beginning to think I might like this quite a lot Let's see if it's sharp. That seems quite reasonable. Uh, I think we might have some dull spots. But I'm expecting that it's only going to take a bit of a strop to fix that. It doesn't seem too bad. Obviously this is a complete mystery steel and it might be rubbish. So, what I'm going to do is spend a couple of days having a proper play, give it a sharpen, 
give it a bit of a test and uh, I'll add some extra comments when I've got a proper idea of uh, whether it's worth 20 quid or not face value very definitely is okay so first half of the video um, concluded that at face value this is well worth 20 quid I've had a couple of days to play with it and what have I found out well first thing is um, initially I was struggling flipping uh, tried easing off on the pivot screw but that just buggers up the blade centering um, apologies to anybody who thought that was perfectly obvious but we all learn as we go along so I put a bit of oil on and decided to work on technique and it turns out that if you give it a flip sorry a flick as well as a flip then it's perfectly fine it was just me being a clumsy so that's okay now the steel this HCP14 MOV I've had it on the strop and I've even had the wet and dry paper on the secondary bevel polish it up a bit now I can't get it to take a sparkling edge it's not bad but it's not what I would like I've got some dull spots still but even where hmm, that's a bit rubbish actually isn't it So you can see, I mean, it does cut, and that's after you know a decent amount of work. And you'll know from previous videos that I am reasonably capable of putting an edge on a blade. But as well as not taking a particularly sparkling edge, I don't think the retention's up to much either. So I've got some heavy cardboard tube, like the 3 mil thickness, and you give it a bit of a, oh, have a bit of a slice, and this isn't particularly heavy work for a blade of this size, I don't think, and I am struggling. I've sliced through this tube far more easily with thicker blades. It seems to seems to retain the sort of decent edge it sort of has, but I'm not convinced on the geometry. Even though we've got um, the main grinder, the hollow grinder, I suspect it is still a bit thick just behind the bevel. So, what else do we know? The liners, the, the corners are very sharp. I spent about 10-15 minutes having a flip, trying to bed it in, get my technique, and by the end of it my finger was red raw just from rubbing on the, uh, on the liners. Similarly, the um, gym pin on the lock bar, it's quite small but the lock bar is thin and it is quite harsh. And for God's sake, even the knurling on the uh, thumb studs is rough. So it's it's a bit, I'm afraid, it's a bit of a case of all fur coat and no knickers. It looks the part. And all the issues that I have with it, you'd be fairly safe to assume, are not going to be present in the actual Jim Hammond custom version. It's just a 20 quid factory clone so can I recommend it? Well, for me, I'm quite happy because it does what it was intended to do for me. In the collection, it ticks the boxes. Um, it's the first CRKT. It's the first uh, flipper. And it's the first knife with a secondary locking system. 
so for 20 quid I'm, I'm okay with that but in terms of could you actually use it no I don't really think you could if you wanted a heavy use day in day out utility knife there's too many rough edges the ergonomics as such are great it's a good comfortable handle but it's just not nice it makes your fingers sore if you wanted it just as a lightweight an everyday carry but not particularly heavy use you'd be far better off with a Victorian Ox Solo because it is a big chunky knife especially for what people in the UK are used to and what they're used to seeing and as a tactical knife which is what the design is for the original one is uh, intended for military use I don't think that you really you could put any faith in this unknown steel I originally assumed it was going to be similar to HCR 13 MOV which I don't mind um, but I don't think it's very good at all so there we have it for my collection it's fine as a user looks nice when you open the box but I'm afraid even at £20 it's a bit of a lemon so I hope that was uh, interesting I uh, hope you found it useful we'll stick a couple of stills at the end um, let you have a close up but I would suggest you keep your 20 quid in your pocket and let this one go by. Thanks for watching.